Hello everybody, welcome back yet again to another drum playthrough review. Thank you everyone for tuning in and stopping by, it's great to have you. For everyone who's brand new, hello and welcome. My name is Nick, I'm a multi-instrumentalist, I like to also mix and master music as well. And the reason why we do these videos is so that way we can take the greats, as far as drumming is concerned, break down their technique into an easy to digest format, and use that so that way we can better ourselves as musicians. I just realized I didn't change the lighting from my last video, so just give me one second. Here's the cool part, watch this. I don't have to go pause my phone and restart the video anymore now that I got a new camera. Eh? So there's a reason why we chose green lighting today, by the way. Today we're gonna be reviewing a band that is absolutely sick. It's a band that I do like. It's a band that has honestly had some of the craziest songs ever put out. And when we're talking about speed as far as drumming is concerned, this guy is probably one of the top extreme drummers to grace the face of this earth. We're talking about the band Cryptopsy, and we're talking about their drummer, Flo Monier. I hope that's how you pronounce that name. I honestly... I do not know. This guy is an absolute beast of a drummer. He's known for his insane speeds and his blast beats, his insanely good drumming, and the band is just overall known for absolutely crazy, hectic, and insane riffs. It's going to be an absolutely sick time watching this. I already know that for sure. I've seen this video a few times before. Flo Monier is absolutely amazing, and he's got a lot of interesting technique that we can break down and we can learn from. <laughs> and I'm definitely excited because this is a drummer that honestly has pushed me farther into tech death than really any other drummer before. And he's somebody that definitely influenced my style as far as my setup of my drum kit goes. That's for certain. Alrighty. Well, without further ado, ladies and gents, let us get into this video. Cryptopsy, Flo Monnier. And he's sponsored. Deservedly. Also, Liquid Death sponsored me. I drink your water a lot. Oh. Refreshing. He uses 5A nylon tips. I mean, look at this guy. He looks like a Chad, too. I mean, just look at that speed, too. For the speed that he is going at, especially with this particular drum playthrough, he's keeping very loose and very nice and tight at the same time. Physically very loose, but the groove is tight. And also, just that, that blast technique is insane. He's been doing that for years. Blasting is insanely clean, too. There's definitely a lot of different rhythm changes ups and tempo changes in this band. Just look at how clean he is, though, with his technique. This is a legit playthrough. Because you see the kit's mic'd up. There's no triggers anywhere. He's probably got his snare drum tuned pretty high, and that's why it sounds so consistent with the drum hits. That tune, he's probably got the attack tuned up on the microphone. If you're wondering too exactly how fast, how he gets that speed on that fast part with the blast beat, that is the molar technique, my friends. Yeah, very clean, very good playthrough. He's keeping it very loose. Using a lot of finger technique, a lot of wrist technique in there as well, depending on the speeds. He's actually adding in ghost notes in there as well, for the groove and the style. That's definitely something I like to see. Very 
pretty good fill there. Very good flavor he's adding to with the toms in there. Now we got that breakdown, by the way, fellas. You know we love breakdowns. You'll notice, too, something that he's doing, he's playing along with the band and he's matching what they need to play. While adding flavor to it as well. He's not going overboard with this breakdown, he's giving it just what it needs. I love to see it. He's also adding in some different rudiment fills in there as well. He's using flam taps for his uh, fills there. A little puzzle roll there too. I right? appreciate that. Very clean. Good job, Flo. Good job. So yeah, man, that was Flo Monier from Cryptopsy. What an amazing drummer. Second of all, that was definitely not a fake performance. Obviously the kit was mic'd up. You could tell he was playing along to the song. There may have been a little bit of a touch up as far as like bringing up the volume in post for the blast beats and all that. But even then, all you have to do is really just turn up the attack on the mic and keep your hits consistent. And you should be fine, honestly. It should sound pretty, pretty consistent overall. So let's break down his technique, why don't we? First of all, he's using a lot of really good wrist motion, a lot of really good finger technique as well, as well as he's employing, as well as also applying the molar technique to his drumming as well. What the molar technique is for those of you who are brand new. I may not know exactly what I'm talking about. The molar technique is when you try and turn one single hit from the from the stick into multiple hits using rebound. This can be achieved through a majority of ways, through different wrist motions that you're using and also just different strokes that you're using and different muscle groups that you're using as well. With Flo, he's using his fingers to be able to, first of all, get that initial hit and then on the bounce back up, he's letting closing his fingers in again so that way he gets that second hit. And that's how he's able to get speeds that fast. You'll see it very, very closely when he's using his wrist technique as well. He's keeping it, it looks like really tense and all that, but in reality, it's micro movements that he's doing like this, just at very high tempos. Cause I've slowed this video down before and looked at it and it's actually it's a very interesting technique to have it's very crazy how you can actually get speeds that fast from something like that he obviously kept very loose during the entire time he was making sure he wasn't keeping too strenuous or anything like that and that's good you absolutely want to keep it loose especially when you're going into high tempos like that that is essential for his bass drum technique i couldn't exactly tell what he was doing from that angle he was using a lot of full leg motion on the a lot slower parts or anything like that and it looked like that he was using just regular ankle motion when it came to the other double bass parts as well i could be wrong he could have been using double strokes because sometimes the camera didn't pan over that way to take a look but i couldn't exactly tell for sure it looked like he was using single strokes throughout the most part of it but all of it was very clean you can tell by his pedal settings he keeps his pedal settings pretty high so that way there's a lot of bounce you'll see that especially in parts that are slower and you can prove it that way because you'll hit one note and then when he lifts off the pedal it bounces back and forth that usually is an indicator of very high spring tension and that is because he's used to playing at very high speeds a lot so that is a couple things to consider for yourself as well depending on uh, how fast you're going with your band so now that we know what kind of technique that he's using what are ways that we can take that technique and implore that into our own and make ourselves better drummers well for one consider the settings of your drums as well if you're recording consider the settings on the recording stuff as well consider is the microphones high enough on the attack is it high enough on the release what needs to be cut out should i use extra compression on this particular part on this particular drum take a lot of different things in consideration especially if you're on the mixing and mastering side of things definitely if you're in the mixing and mastering side of things get a good drum bus as well drum buses change how everything sounds in a mix and it makes the drums just so much more lively and it gives you that little extra push that just makes it great make sure you eq the drums as well so that way everything sounds really nice and cool too from the actual instrumentation side of things, consider the settings on your drums. Do you need to tune up the drums so that way there's a little bit more bounce to them so that way you can get a better rebound? Do maybe you need to tune up the spring tension on your bass drums, pedals, so that way you can get a little bit more of a bounce back so that way you can get higher tempos a little bit easier? Just ask yourself these kind of questions and just ask and see, you know, hey, do I need to maybe change some things around as far as what my old setup was so that way I can achieve those speeds that I was previously not able to achieve? These are all very important questions to ask yourself. And it is something that I know a lot of drummers 
don't want to do because they're very stuck in their ways with their settings. But sometimes if you just break out of that comfort zone with your settings, you're able to find a way that's a little bit easier to play that part that you're having a little trouble getting to. That too, and also consider maybe switching out to lighter beaters on your bass drum heads. If you are having trouble hitting speeds that are that high. The problem may not even be your pedal settings or your technique. It may be the actual weight of the beater that you're using that's causing you to get that slow. So just make a consideration whether you may want to switch a couple things around on your drum kit. Consider the sticks that you're using as well. In this video, Flo was using 5A nylon tips from Vic Firth. I personally use 5A extreme nylon tips because there's just that little extra three quarter of, a, of an inch on the stick and that I just like how a little bit longer of a stick is better for me because I like the weight and the feel of it. I've seen drummers who use 2Bs, 2B extremes, 2B nylon tips, and I've seen drummers that use smaller sticks like 7As or, or 8As or something like that. Definitely take into consideration all these things because all these are going to have different factors on how your drums sound as well. But yes, excellent job on Flo's part. He's an incredible drummer and he did a great job in this video. And with all that being said, y'all, thanks for tuning in and stopping by for this video. We're going to wrap it up here. So here's a few things y'all can do to support me. So for one, you can like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff that really does help the channel out in the algorithm. You can also check out the playlist I have with videos very similar to this. And you can also check out the links I have down below for my band page on my Spotify page as well. And with all that being said, y'all, thank you so much for tuning in and stopping by. Glad to have you for this video and hopefully i'll be able to see you guys in my next one so cheers everyone and have a great night